What's up, Mortgage Coach community? Dave Savage sitting down live with Darius Mashazadeh. Yeah, pretty good. Mashazadeh, yeah. Mashazadeh, right on. Uh, it's it's. I'm fired up to interview you for the second time. Uh, I'm very proud and very fired up that this time I have listened to your book. I did the audio book. I also have the book and I've gone through it. And and Mortgage Coach community is saying is solid gold, a must read for every mortgage coach loan officer. If you think you're a value-based mortgage professional, I would just say, think again, read the book. There's growth to be had. So thanks for making time to come back for a second time, brother. Dude, I was looking forward to it. After the last show, I was like, man, that was like one of the most fun times I've had on a show. And so it was cool. You, really? You, you had a good time? Yeah, man, because like, you know, a lot of the, the, the I, I haven't done much of promotion in the mortgage world. Although I'm a mortgage like person by trade, I've been going into the more the entrepreneurial world outside of mortgage. So yours was the first show I did in mortgage. And I was like, oh yeah, this is, this is my peeps. <laughs> you know, it's like I grew up in mortgage. So it's, it's fun to, to talk about this type of stuff in, in mortgage. Cause I think a lot, a lot of people in mortgage, you know, I think they, I think they think they're doing this and I don't think they really are. I, I think the same thing. Uh, and we'll we'll unpack that in a minute. So so guys, the interview we did was exceptional. I mean, it was a lot of fun to listen to. I think for anybody who's a C-suite executive or you're leading a team, it's one of the best interviews of 2021. I mean, it's a must listen to conversation. Check it out. You'll get his whole story. And and dude, your story. I mean, I knew you were a baller, and the way you were recommended to me, I'm like, okay, the guy's a stud. I want to interview him, but I didn't really have the why in a personal way. But dude, you've accomplished some pretty amazing things in the mortgage space. Yeah, you know, I, I I grew up in mortgage, like I said, and it's funny when you kind of look at it. Um, you know, I think you kind of take it for granted while you're doing it, right? And and I'm and I'd say I, I'm pretty humble about it because, like, frankly, I got my ass kicked pretty hard to get there. Right? It was hard, you know. Like, I, I was a small lender and a broker and an LO myself, and then grew up into you know becoming the CEO of what's now one of the largest companies in the United States. Um, in the in the lending space, and you know, right now that company is a manages a hundred billion dollars in mortgages almost. And so, I mean, dude, I I used to t box my loans into you know to, to the lenders and stack my own loans, right? Like, so to go from I was joking, I'm probably one of the few guys that you know st stacked and processed my mortgage all the way to managing you know a company that now has a hundred billion dollars worth of mortgages to manage. You know, that's that's a pretty rare occurrence. So. You know, so it's a unique, it's a unique uh, skill set to have in, in the space, I guess. Yeah, well, there's there's not a lot of people that I interview that have built a mortgage platform that big. And to me, what's what's more important than all that is is how you built a team yeah. and how you built a culture that is based around core values. So I I um, put the headline for this. Anyone that's coming into it, they're coming in with this thought of how to turn my core values. Uh, or how can my core values supercharge my sales and marketing? And I remember when I was listening to the audiobook, I'm like, oh yeah, I've got documented values. And then I was like, hey, if you asked all my employees, would they know them? And I'm like, well, they know a couple of them, if I'm being honest. Uh, but do my customers know them? Yeah. That was humbling to me. I was like, no, I don't think our customers, well, I know our customers don't know our core values. Uh, and so that was humbling to me, one, personally. But two, I think it's it's humbling to every loan officer out there that says, hey, I'm values driven, but your customers don't know it. And I, I think there's just a massive growth opportunity, yeah. whether someone's new in the business or whether they are one of America's absolute most successful loan officers. I think getting your co-values to a point where it's a weapon in your sales and marketing is huge. So walk us through that. Like, what's that? What's that sound like? What's that look like? Well, so to make it simple, you know, uh, you know, I, I uh, met and hung out with Simon Sinek back in 2009. Now, if you can imagine June of 2009 to be in the mortgage business, like you, you're really questioning what the hell you're doing, right? And I was young. I was like 30 years old then. So I'm 42 years old now. But I was 30 years old. I had just built my previous company. And actually, I still own the company at that time. It was uh, the 40th fastest growing privately held company in the United States. It was a it was called Twin Capital Mortgage. And it was a high growth company I built in my 20s that became a correspondent lender, a retail lender. And then, and then like many companies, I was in good company, we got crushed by the meltdown that happened. And so I'm, I'm going to this thing with, 
and Simon's talking about your why. And I was like, what's my why? You know, and I ended up talking to him. It was, he was a total unknown guy then. Like nobody knew. This was before he did his TED talk, it's before he had a book. He was just some dude that was like talking about knowing your why. And so in his TED talk that is now famous around knowing your why, he said, people don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. People don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. And I come from a sales background. And I started thinking about that. And so I could tell you, like, if you're if people are buying what you do, you got a problem, man. Like you have a problem this past week when your rate, the tenure went up, you know, 20 basis points and you had loans fall out that because they, they can't, you can't save them a quarter or whatever it is you're trying to, you know, roll them into. You know, you have a problem, hey, you got a bigger problem because tenure is going to go back to two. What are you going to do? I can't believe that's even a bad thing, right? Like that we're even like, the, that would even be a negative. What do you mean go, go back to two, right? So we're in this unprecedented times where people have crushed it, taking advantage of a great market opportunity. And I was talking to this person the other day and I said, and I don't mean to be a jerk, but I said, any moron can make money in mortgage right now. And I meant it. I said, any moron can make money in mortgage right now. I was, if I was an LO and I wasn't making a million dollars a year, I'd be, I'd be worried. Like, yeah, I, I literally, I mean it when I say that. I would be worried because it means you, you're, you're not good enough to take advantage of this market. You know, uh, and the number I just said, and I, and I mean it, is a million dollars a year. I know kids fresh out of school that are making half a mil. Uh, literally, they can barely tie their shoelaces. So, like, you know, if I'm, if I'm that, it means you're selling the what, you're not selling the why. And the opportunity lies in the, in the why. Like, people want, you want people to do business with you regardless of price. You want people to do business with you because you're such a, like they resonate with a human being you are. Your company, the, the personality of your company, what you stand for resonates with them. So think of who you like to do business with. There's two types of people we like to do business with. People that we believe what they believe and people who we like their price and, and the product, right? And sometimes they're both, they combine, but usually they're not. So I'll use an example. I like Virgin. I like Virgin brand a lot. Like I dig them. Branson's just kind of a stud. I like Elon Musk. He's a badass, right? But why do I like him? Because these dudes, the guys, they're mavericks. They're 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 counterculture. They're just these like cool people, right? I want to give them my money. Will I pay a little more to give them my money? Probably. Probably. I don't have to think that hard about it. Then on the other side of the fence are these brands that like nothing special about them. It's all price driven. Am I going to pay them even a penny more? Absolutely never. And so you have a choice in sales. I can be the Richard Branson of mortgage, or I can be the, the American Airlines, right? Like no one, no one flies on. Listen, I'm an American, like platinum select, blah, blah, blah. I hate American Airlines. <laughs> you know, there, there's not a lot. To but like. you're, in, you're, you're in Texas. And so it's, Texas. It's, a, it's a hub. I'm a victim of circumstance, right? but I don't love them. They're not my favorite airline. Um, now, Southwest is up here. I'm not their ideal client, but I like their personality better. And I'll choose them when I get to. And, I, and they don't even have that. The, the product's done. It's a cheaper product. But I like the personality. So we, but we do, people do business with people that, who they, they are aligned with and who they like. This is just a fact of life. So where, where lies the opportunities? People do not explicitly say what they stand for. And so in mortgage, you get... To, I, I call you up, ring, ring. Hey, Darius, I want to do a loan with you. Great. What's your rate? First question. Okay. So, so what do we do? We tell them the rate, and then we say, "Oh, and someone else, I'll price match you, right?" I want, uh, anyone comes, I'll price match. So it's a defensive play, right? By the way, all this is like coming from a place of scarcity, right? I'm saying right. these things because I'm positioning from a place of scarcity, and I, I Dave, I, I, I just imitated 99% of the LOs in the world right now. Then there's the, then there's the guy that's selling from core values. Ring, ring. Hey, what's your price? Whoa, 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 buddy. Before we go there, first of all, I only do business with people who I believe have share values with. And I want to make sure that you're the type of person that we could build a long-term relationship with. Before we talk about price, and first of all, I just want to say, price is table stakes. I have to have a competitive price or else you're not going to stick with me. I already know that. We'll go there in a second. But before I go there, I want to know, why do you do what you're doing? How can I help you? It's not about price. It may be about product. Price has got to be good enough or else you're going to get off the phone and go somewhere else. I already know that. We'll go to price last. Let's just assume I'm going to give you a, a competitive price. 
but let's talk about what your needs are. And before we go there, I'm gonna tell you, these are my four core values. Caring about individuals, having high integrity, doing so with commitment and being service oriented. And everything I do in my process surrounds those four values. So with that being said, I wanna care for you as an individual and your family. Let's talk about what your needs are. When I had that conversation, that is a totally different conversation than when they call Quicken on the phone. Just is. Like, I'm a human being. I'm offering a totally different conversation. And people, guys, let me tell you this, LOs, no one's going to remember anything you said. They're going to remember how you made them feel. You know, that's a Maya Angelou quote. People don't remember what you say. They remember how you make them feel. So they're going to get off the phone with Darius. They'll be like, did I trust that guy? I like that guy. I want to give him my business. And if, and, and, and if someone price cuts him, I'm going to tell him they're price cutting him. So I give him the opportunity to win the business keep the business that's therein lies the opportunity so so Darius so it sounds like one takeaway for everyone right now is that if you are not clear on your values if they're not simple and easy to remember and to communicate to a customer that's a table stake and within the first conversation of your customers you should they should know your your values you know what's the scripting but if if you're getting off a call with someone and you know where it was the discovery call and they don't know your core values that's a missed opportunity that's yeah, what you're telling I, me i think you lead with it right okay. I, I lead with it because it's my differentiating value proposition i'm showing vulnerability and leadership with them the minute i say to them my name is darius Mershaze. i'm here to help you with the mortgage before we go there, though i think it's important that you understand what my four important core values of me and my family are like like what lo are they calling when the next guy they call who's like, you know, some dude, sorry, Ello's in Jersey, some dude in Jersey that's like just slinging price. I, I win. Yeah, sorry. I, 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 I agree. And mortgage coach community, I hope, I'm not saying the word advice needs to be one of your four core values, but, but if you're part of the mortgage coach community, we're all about giving people advice over price. Any loan officer can give a fee worksheet that says, hey, here's your rate. Here's your payment. Here's your cash to close. If you are not giving families a total cost analysis and you're giving them loan options, so options, and you're giving the transparency of those options over time, I don't even, if you say your values are advice and then you give a fee worksheet, you're not living your values. So mortgage coach community, it's important to know that there's no bigger value than advice when it comes to getting a mortgage. Any comments on that? Because I know you know what we do and you're, you know, we, I think last time we did the interview I actually showed a screenshot of a total cost analysis. Um, what are your thoughts on how a loan officer should build advice into their value set? Yeah, I mean, like, so I, what, what I always look at is people, and this is the world's moving in this direction, right? Is that price is being commoditized, right? Like, especially if you're doing like Fannie and Freddie type product, it's very commoditized business. It, you're not going to be able to win very much business off price these days. So because everyone can kind of be, they're, they're going to ballpark be about the same. Um, when I look at advice, it's, a, you know, at the end of the day, your client, I always just think of myself as a client. I go, what do I want as a client, right? So, you know, for me, it's understanding what their needs are. And, and when they go straight for the kill, I go, great, I'll give you that number, but it doesn't mean anything until I understand what's in your best interest, right? Now, if there are, and most customers are not savvy enough where they're going to know what you know. That they're, every now and again, you get a Darius on the phone, which you don't want to do alone with me because I'm going to go for the jugular quick. But when you get a Darius on the phone, you got to go, you could talk about your values. I'll appreciate it. But I'm going to say, hey, I'm a mortgage professional. People will get me on the phone sometimes because I shop loans for myself. I'm like, hey, listen, man, I was the CEO of the money source. Like, just here's my FICO. Tell me what your best price is at par. You know, send me your rate sheet. We go through the rate sheet together, right? Um, I'm, I'm a one in a thousand. Like, you're not going to get Darius on the phone. What you're going to get is a lot of people where it's a scary process for them. Uh, your job is to make them feel comfortable, give them something competitive, help them navigate the process, give them high service so you get them coming back for more, and you get their referrals. That's what you want. And the way you get there, in my opinion, is by building trust and transparency. And the mortgage coach, what I like about you, what you guys do is there is a lot of transparency and there's a lot of advice around the why and the options and alternative ways of looking at the mortgage. And it's not just uh, here's your 2.75 30 year fixed payment. Do you want taxes and insurance included? Yes, no. Like they can do that on bankrate.com. They don't need you. 
right? And so if all you are is a human version of bank rate, good luck, you're gonna be out of the business. And, and like, I don't need, it's like, think of it like this. When, when I, I bought homes, my last three homes I bought, my realtors don't even show me the homes. I tell them what home I wanna look at, right? Hey, and then they give me the lockbox code and I'm like, why, why are you getting a commission? <laughs> like the minute someone says, why, do you, why are you getting a commission? You should question the future of your of your career, you know. And so, when you're just quoting rates and quoting payments, you're an order taker, man. And I will tell you, next five years, order takers are going to be out of work. Order takers are going to be automated. Yeah, everything that can be automated will be automated. Hundred percent of it, man. It'll be AI and IA, artificial intelligence and Indian automation. Every ounce of that stuff will go overseas. And the minimum they have to pay you to do the job, they will pay you. And that's going to be the reality. That's the reality of our industry. I can see it right now. I, I will tell you, I know from the inside out, I know what the largest lenders are doing. Every single step of the process they can take offshore, they are. And you think salespeople are immune from that? Good luck. You're not. It's, it's on you to create value. And value, it starts with your value. Start with your, with your commitment to the customer. And so... Yeah, sorry. So no, all all good. Well, let's let's break down some of this from a mortgage coach perspective, and then let's, let's give them a, at least another idea on how to do this. But so, guys, if this is what you are delivering, this is status quo. You know, if it is an email, if it's rate, payment, and cash to close, and that is the only value you're providing, one, it's confusing. There's a lot of unanswered questions for the family. It doesn't align with their bigger goals. And guys, you are absolutely commoditizing yourself because this is what bank rate can do. This is what lending Creek can do. This is what Rocket can do. This is what every loan officer can do in America. If you're not putting your brand on it, if you're not adding a video to it, if you're not putting your values in front of it, and then if you're not showing the family more than just the transaction, like you got to make sure whatever you're delivering is showing transactional details but it's going beyond transactional details. Like this is a refi. We're like, hey, what if we took our monthly savings and we prepaid our mortgage? How much interest would we save? Like if you're not breaking down every purchase TBD and showing family, what does that mean to their future? Like the transparency going beyond the transaction. Uh, I'm, I'm, with, I'm with you, Darius. It's not a question of if you're going to do this. It's when are you going to do it? And, and are you going to do it as a leader of a team and under your own brand? Or are you going to be doing it on someone else's team under their brand? And, and so and that's the other thing that we're seeing. We're seeing a tremendous growth in the number of team loan officers that are, that are just building these mortgage machines. They've got a personal brand. They're delivering a total cost analysis. They're using social media. So, but here's the thing. They, they have words on paper. So if you listen to the book, you'll you'll get the definition of words on paper uh, and they're not building it into their conversation. So one takeaway so far is make sure people know your core values in a constructive way, not in an awkward way during a conversation. What are some other ways that we could take our core values and supercharge our sales and marketing? Yeah, so so look, there's different ways to grow the business, right? So you could use it with the client directly. The other way you could do it is start to use it with your partners. So am I going to use that with my realtor partners? Because, because again, it's, I, you know, I, a TMS, my CMO was this woman named Barbara Yolis. And she was at, she was the CMO of United Wholesale Mortgage. And I recruited her to come over. The, re, the reason I got her, you know, she left them when they were up killing it. You don't recruit a Barbara Yolis without, giving her a compelling reason to come over. And the compelling reason was, uh, was that my values resonated with her. She loved UWM, but this, you know, I, I sold her on the, us being a values driven organization. The same is true for anybody. If you want top notch partners to come join you, whether it is a, a, another LO from, from another shop, whether it's a processor, whether it's a realtor, whether it's the borrower, they're all coming because people don't do business. People don't do business with, with what you are. They do it with why you are what you are. So for, for me, it's, it's the language of accountability. When I tell the world that I stand for these values, I, it becomes a talking point from a B to C and a B to B perspective. 
And that all increases more, more value, right? The better people I get around me, the better my, I'll get better referrals from that. I'll get more referrals. Uh, I, the, my relationships are stickier uh, because they're, they're not aligned around the commoditization of making money. They're aligned around a shared set of values. And, you know, when you look up the textbook definition of core values, it's the fundamental beliefs of a personal organization. So for me, it's taking those values and, and making them 360. That's why I say, do you know them, your, your employees know them, your customers know them. Why? Because I want them all showing up and they're like, man, I like doing business with Darius. My values and his values resonate. Man, I like working with Darius. My values and his values resonate. The only way they could say my values and his values resonate is they have to know what mine are, right? And if I talk about them, people, and everyone, people that know me, know, I talk about values all the time. Everyone that knows me knows I talk about values all the time. They know what I stand for. I talk about it all the time. And, well, and, well, you are the core value equation guru. And so you're, you know, you're one in a million. Yeah, but, but, but what's- One in 200 million. You know, you know what's funny about this though, Dave, is what I found, I was talking, I, I have a coach that I work with who's, who uh, is a, an exceptional guy. He was Lance Armstrong's coach actually. And he's my coach and his name is Jeff Spencer. And he and I were talking about this. And I said, so, you know, Jeff, it's funny. Every single group I'm in, everyone, all they talk about is their core values now. These are all these CEO groups I'm in. Like they run the groups off of them. They run the companies off of them. All we talk about in the groups is our values. And, and it, all I did was I was just doing my thing and it infected them. It's like a virus. It infected all of them. And now it's everything they do because what they've seen is the value of it is if they do it, it becomes this really powerful tool that they can use for decision-making, for attracting customers, for firing customers. Hey, listen, we're talking about adding customers. Sometimes the best cu customer to add is the one you didn't add. It is the one that messes your company up, right? Same with LOs or same with processors. Sometimes the best one is the one you don't add because it's not a value fit. Because think of it, it's not the good customers that ruin you. It's the bad ones that are really, really ruin you, right? So how do we do that? We get clear on our values. And in the book, I talk about this. It becomes a magnet to attract in the right people and detract the, the wrong people. And it doesn't matter. Like I, I look at everyone the same way. Everyone's your customer, whether it is your internal team or your external team. They're all, I call them customer one. This is, I stole this from Mercedes. My internal team is my first customer. And my external team, my, my customer that pays me for my services, their experience is a reflection of my internal team's experience. So if I want them to have a great experience, well, you bet your ass my processor better love working for me. Because if she or he doesn't like working for me, my external customer is not going to have the experience I want them to have. So this is why I say it's 360. It's, it's got to be everywhere. And I got to live it when I'm recruiting both clients, realtor partners, referral partners, LOs that work for me, processors that work for me. And if you're a banker, all my ops staff, all my admin staff, all my marketing staff, it doesn't matter, right? And I was talking to you know, Scott Groves at Movement. Do you know him? Uh, in yeah, well, not only do I know him, but he's watching you right now on Facebook. He uh, just gave us a like. So yeah, I know him and he's... He's listening to you, so be careful. So, so, yeah, no, 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 no. Be careful. <laughs> I'm kidding. Talking. I'm kidding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was gonna say. So I was, so I was talking to Scott about this because it, I, I was talking with, with his, his, uh, some of his coaching groups that he works with, and I said it doesn't matter if you're the CEO of the company. Like when, I, like my, the first company I built core values in outside of my company was a company I didn't even own. I was, I was building. I had a joint venture with Pacific Union Financial. And I just rolled out the core values for our division. I was like, eh, it didn't matter to me. And I told Scott the same thing. I said, it doesn't matter. I said, you got a branch and you work for a guaranteed rate and they're not promoting the values or you don't think your values of your branch fully align or they should, but let's just say they haven't been explicit about it there. I, I don't know their values, by the way. Let's say they may have amazing values, but let's say, forget about guaranteed rate. Any company you're at, let's say they have not done the core value equation work. I said, I roll out for my branch. I'm not going to wait for someone else to do it for me. You know, I'm going to roll out our branch values and we're going to live those values. Now, if the company has them more, the, even better, you know, so it's not, a, it's not this thing where you got to be the CEO of the company to do it. I mean, you might be a broker and it's just you, you still should do it because core values are the fundamental beliefs of a person or organization. You want to use those to leverage it as a resonance tool. That's why I'm like, it's all about core values, man. Everything starts and ends with values in my book. It doesn't matter if it's in your business, out of your business, it's all the same.
There's, there's no doubt. Guys, I'm going to push it even further. If you are a loan officer, you should have your own core values. Now, you're working for a bigger company that has well-documented values. Leverage those. Those are part of your values. But, but there should be some things that are just unique to you. If you, you have a personal brand on social media, you've got core values. It's just a question of whether they're clear, they're documented, and they actually represent you. So you, you've got them. People are, they see you in a certain way. Uh, I, I got to have a hard stop soon and I got to get him off the phone and into his next meeting. But, but guys, this, this is an important book for mortgage coach professionals. Uh, it will help you get clear on your personal values, on your team values, and it will help you document those in a way that will grow your culture. And it will help you leverage those in your sales and marketing. Uh, I do want to make sure that guys, this is a mastermind. I want to know how mortgage coach loan officers are using their core values in team building. Um, so please, you know, comment down below. Now, before we wrap up, Darius, I, beyond reading the book, are there other things that you do, other ways that our community can can follow you, can use things that you're doing to to grow? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, look, we're, we have uh, the book is being turned into a, like basically a mastermind slash um, a workshop, and it's called Darius. I, I, it's under DariusClass.com. So you go to DariusClass.com. That's actually rolling out right now. It's if, if you building values is, is a process. So it's, it's really, it's, it's a six hour video course. And then there's a full weekly 12 month um, facilitation where you come and, and you'll be working with me directly. So DariusClass.com, I'm telling everybody to go there. It should be, that, that website should be up. If not, you can go to the real Darius.com and just sign up on the website there for emails and you should be getting that there soon. So yeah. Is this it? Yeah, that's it. That's it. Yeah. So it's, um, dude, it's pretty legit. I mean, it, it looks, we got a video to watch. I mean, it's pretty pro. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it should, I don't know if it's live yet. The video, uh, it's literally going up this weekend. So that it, I might be giving you a, a dead link. <laughs> no, well, it's not a dead link. It's not. So first of all, the audience for this, there, there'll probably be a thousand people in our Facebook group watch this over the next 24 hours. But our YouTube audience, you know, there'll be hundreds of loan officers checking it out. We'll put a link down below, guys. Uh, I'm going to be signing up for this. I'm going to be checking it out. Uh, check it out. Hey, check this out. Glass Doors, number nine ranked CEO reveals. I actually didn't, I don't think I knew that about you. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I, I, I got it a couple of years ago. So yeah, it's, 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 it's no joke, man. Like, I don't know. I always tell people, I said, I don't know how to grow a company without this stuff. Like for me, it's like, I don't know how to do it. I know how to do it. I know how much pain I get when I don't do it. And I don't know how to run a business without it. I don't care if you're a one man shop or a thousand person shop or a 5,000 person shop. It's all the same to me. So it's, it, if I want my customers to be raving fans. I want to do it from a place of values because that, that there's a reason why the word core is in front of values. It's deep in our soul. It's what we stand for. It's the personality of ourselves our businesses and our organizations. And for me, I want people to do business with me because of that, not because of price. Like the price, price comes and goes, but values are here to stay. Yeah, I love it. So guys, I hope you got value from this. Give it a like, share it with your mortgage friends. Please grow your, your clarity around your values. Use it in your sales and marketing. If I'm gonna, if you wanna have me interview you on how you're using core values in sales marketing, I'm looking to bring more success stories around this into the mortgage coach community. So Darius, really appreciate you, brother. I hope you'll jump back into the community again sometime soon. Cool. And uh, thanks for your time, man. Yeah, thanks for having me, man. It was fun, dude. All right, take care.